How to edit your videos using only your phone. I edited a one hour long vlog purely on my phone with just one editing software. Had around 158 clips making this. This one hour long vlog took me around six days to make, but because there were breaks. So today I'll be showing you how I made the whole process, what are the tips and tricks, but I am using this software. It's not sponsored. I'm using CapCut. Using my phone, already had no excuses to just vlog. I'm moving my tripod. Say hi, Momo! How to edit your videos using only your phone. I'm gonna use CapCut. So let's open CapCut and then let's open this sample video and then I'll show you what are the basics of editing that you should know through this interface. So with CapCut, to add a video, you just have to click the plus button and then click on videos, photos, live photos, or library. The library is free videos, free graphics of what you can choose. You can add any videos that you like. I already have a video here. How to cut or split a clip. Splitting a clip is essentially removing parts that you want to remove. So to split a clip, you can either use this dragging feature. So when you click on a clip, you'll see this two white borders on your clip. So that, that's actually to cut or split your clip already. You can drag it on the left or right side so that you can trim it down. Or you can use the split feature on the lower left. Click the split feature where you can already remove certain parts of the clip. And then you choose that clip that you want to remove. And then you delete it. Delete on the lower right. Next, to view your whole timeline, to zoom in, zoom out, you just have to pinch on your screen so that you can see the full timeline. Scroll to left or right and then zoom back in, pinching in, and then you can go see the full length of your even just one clip. This is to add transitions, you can click on in between two clips, there's like this square icon. Just click on that and you can choose a simple transition to go to the next video. So what I like to use is either use circle so let's see how that looks like. And then you can change the duration of that video. I also like to use the blink effect. So, so that's how to use simple transitions for your videos, but you don't necessarily have to put them. So you just, you can click none. For audio, so for audio, you can either choose sounds or sound effects. There's also a record option. So you can actually just make your video completely silent, but you can also do voiceovers. To completely make your video silent, you can click mute clip audio on the left part of your timeline this is the mute clip audio if you just choose to edit one clip so for example we want this clip to have audio we're gonna scroll all the way to the right and then click volume so you can also choose loudness adjustment this clip it's all the same audio level for all the clips if you click loudness adjustment for sounds, CapCut already has a list of different free songs recommended. You can also extract audio from your video. So for example, you downloaded royalty free music, you can also extract that from your video or your screen recording and add it here. And then you can also choose from commercial. And then there's also options to choose from, like different genres of music. Next is for sound effects. So for sound effects, I already have a list of music that I like to choose, like phone ringtone, iPhone message, cashier sound, and you can see trending like the pop sound, sounds like whoosh. You can also search sound effects. How to use overlays. So let's click overlay and then click add overlay. You can choose from the library and let's choose an effect. Let's see this heart icon. Click add. And then what I want to happen is I actually want both clips to be seen. So I click on the, the image I just chose and then click splice. And then actually I can change the opacity or I can use darken, lighten, filter, and different things to see what works. Let's try darken or let's try lighten there. And then you'll see that effect. Okay, that's how to use overlays. For effects, there's different video effects, body effects, photo effects, and AI effects. I'm just gonna try video effects because what I normally use is here on my bookmarks. I can either choose spotlight. I just wanna choose 
to highlight this part and then I can choose the speed of the video of how the effects are gonna show. Let's try the end so it's more seen. There. So those are effects. There's a lot of different effects and you can see that it already it's already here and you can choose the length of the effect. Up to what part of your video will that show. How to do basic color grading on your phone. Click filters or adjust. What I normally just choose is adjust and then I usually make my videos a bit brighter because I want it to be seen better. And then a bit of contrast. And then for saturation, I actually play with this when I'm making my thumbnails. I click sharpen so that the quality of the video is better and clarity as well. And then if I want it to have a certain mood, I actually remove some tones, especially the orange and yellow tones. That makes a big difference to how your videos look. Also the blue and greens. Those are the normal ones that I choose to play with. And I don't change the hue, I just change the saturation or the lightness of certain videos. And then for filters, that's actually a pretty quick way to make a different mood for your video. So what I use to make my videos more cinematic, I love to use Summertail. That for me is the most in my sense, in my in my point of view, what I like my videos to have if I wanted to have a more cinematic feel. How to make your videos more aesthetic with text. So for text, there's a lot of different options. There's, let's for example, put hello. Here are the different styles. You just click styles and then you will see different outline options here. And then you can actually choose brand color, stroke, glow, background. So for example, I'll choose a different font. My favorite font is color IT. That's what I use for most of my thumbnails. And then I'll choose glow, for example, if I want that to be brighter. I choose range or intensity. Let's make it yellow if you want it to have a different color. Or you can choose stroke. So the stroke is basically the outline of the text. You can choose anything. It's also pretty nice. You can make it thicker, you can make it thinner. And then for background, this is how I make my pop-up text chat effect. So let's choose a more default system type of text. So this is my sample text, the hello. And then I'll choose background, the first option. This is already here, the color blue. And then for corner radius, I put that to the highest one. The opacity should be highest. And for height, I just put it around 19 or 20. And then for width, around 30. So that makes the text bubble effect and I make my text way smaller than it is since it's a text. These are my fonts. This is my effect for thumbnails. I choose the curve option and I use my font which is the Scholar IT font. There. It looks better if it's curved. I, I make it a bit curved only so around 20 24 20 to 24 there's also spacing options scale is the size character is the distance between text and the line is for example you have two text so i'll show you by not choosing this font so for example it shouldn't be curved because if it's curved it won't show the distance of the text so let's show that back again. Character, let's make it there. And then the line is the distance between the text. Between the lines of the text. And then you can also choose where it's positioned on the left or the right. You can choose it's, if it's bold or italic, underlined. And the casing for all your text. If it's caps lock or smaller case lock. How to make your YouTube intros. This is how I make mine. So if you'll see, I'll play my intro for that one hour vlog. Let's go to the first part. This is, I'll be teaching you how to use keyframes. So this is a sticker. The cursor, the pointer cursor is just a sticker. So I click on stickers 
at the lower left part and then I search for the cursor icon and I add that so when you're gonna choose keyframes it's basically keyframes are just point to points so for the first point add the keyframe the keyframe option is the diamond icon beside the back button and the forward button so once you click one keyframe you click the plus with the diamond and that's your first frame and when you want to make it to the next point you drag your element or the cursor to the next point and then it follows along so if you see a sample this is how it would look like the last thing i'll teach you is how to remove a background with green screen using chroma key on CapCut. so i added an overlay with the graphics i made on canva so the graphics is basically this image so the image is how i want my intro to look like i clicked on add overlay and you can see that there's a big screen here, the, there's a big green screen at the back of the text. So I added that element to Canva, but I'd made my, my text white since I want it to be seen in my video. So all I have to do is click on the overlay that I added and then go to remove background. Then I click chroma key, chroma key on the lower right. And then I click color picker. So once I click color picker, I go to the green part and then I choose clean up edge so that the green isn't that seen anymore. So that's how you use green screen or chroma key or your remove background feature. Lastly, how to export. So as you can see on the upper right, it says export, but beside it, there's a resolution part that you can adjust. So there's 1080p, 2K, and 4K. So 1080p is standard high definition, 2K is better, and 4K is the best. But since this is already 38 gigabytes, the 2K and 4K is very much going to take up a lot of storage. So I usually just go for 1080p and at frame rate 30 FPS, code rate recommended, and I don't choose optical flow or smart HDR. So I just click on export and then to double check, it's the same as I chose, and then I click save the device. So that's going to export for a 45 minute long video, it usually takes less than an hour. And then for a one hour video, it takes around an hour to export. For 4K, expect that to be around more than, around two hours if you're gonna export at around that, that resolution. It's way easier for me than on the laptop since I already use my phone all the time. It's easier if it's a long video on laptop, definitely, but my hand says otherwise because my hand cramps sometimes. That's just my preference, but definitely there's no excuse to not edit on your phone if you have no time. That's just me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If this was useful for you, a subscribe would be helpful for me too. And I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned a lot.